Let's now head to the court on failure of investigators to produce evidence in court in the matter of the alleged killing of an 11-year-old for ritual purposes forced a Kaneshi magistrate court to adjourn hearing to Monday, August 16. At the last count in 2020, there were a total of 15,463 inmates across Ghana's 44 prison facilities. Out of this number, 226 young offenders are serving time in Ghana's only senior correctional centre located in Accra. The centre is mandated to correct, rehabilitate and reintegrate young offenders. On this assignment, I seek to know the true state of children who come into conflict with the law in Ghana. Good morning. Please, where's their church, their chapel? Right, the green one? Thank you very much. The blue and white, okay. Those that are trained to serve the Lord, talk of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. A message of encouragement to look beyond their current circumstances and hope for better days. But this feeling is short lived. Not long, the inmate queue to be counted to return to their dormitories. Then the guilt, loneliness, and dejection soon creeps in. A feeling Theophilos knows too well. On the age of 16, 17, I met uh, my friend and we used to be uh, friends, he's a lady friend, but actually what happened, he became my girlfriend, and we are just then, something happened, I just have a favorite hair, and he became a police case, and they just sent me to Senior Correctional Center. So now, they sent me to there, now I was looking, say maybe my family, they'll come support me, they'll come for me, they'll... but when I went there, almost getting to six months, there was nobody there, so I thought that was my end. And one day I was just there and I, I thought to myself, oh, you know, should I kill myself? Because there's nobody, there's no, and even the food we think there's no good. So I was saying, say, like, so now this is my end. I was, so when, I, when I'm sleeping, all these bad dreams and those stuff, but I doesn't give up on God. One day I just took up and I prayed to God and I asked God to favor me. So I was just then, one visitor come and what for one of my uncle and he came to talk to me. Then we share idea together. And if, before I see there is somebody in my life that can support me, now I know they are there, but I don't know them because of the struggle life. I was just passing anywhere, I was just passing anywhere, and the kids are being dead, dead, sent me today. So now I think that was my end. I call one of the officer and share my idea with him and share my problem with him and he said okay i'll help you you have a shop here so there's a lot of shop between trees and those stuff and tailoring and this stuff so i like fashion things so i like to do the tailoring and i go okay you send me to the shop and he sent me to the exact thing just let me say three months i was just doing some things it's not about me or i think it's a gift because i think it's, I think it's a gift and when i'm working he said they are just happy they said hey you just come now, see how you are working, see how you are doing things, wonderful things. I said, I can love him to break work. So I was just doing my best, and some also when they come around, they just give me something small, oh, take this small, and take this small. And this one, I used to hide it, and they send me there for two years. So as they teach me the work, when I'm about to come, the series I have is always a sample. And when I come, and I just go straight to the uh, machine shop and do stuff and I bought the gems machine and I said okay let me start something home. In his one room apartment, Theophilos is picking up the pieces and making clothing for a living. He admits it's tough. I never give up. I focus 
and I pray hard and I work hard and I serve. One day I go to my church and I tell them, oh, I'm a fashion designer. I used to sew, so if they want to sew, they can tell me. So they are becoming one, 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 one. And I started with the one that sew one shirt for them. I told them, thanks to this because I need customers. Now the farm starting, so I'm trying to do them good so that they can come more. Even the officers, when I left there, they called me to come and take their uniform and sew for them because they trust me and the way I work for them, they like my work. The inmates here are seven time for various offences, ranging from armed robbery, defilement, and murder. Some of them share their stories with me. That was some place be. Place that we call Minigam Bambi. Or the machine be with them. Machine also in your store. I don't care, sir. I don't know, sir. We got it five million blood. It takes five million blood. and I'm seeing my farm on some piece and my back to sales. To date, you have a cold coat. Your mom, your mom, we 10 years. So I'm going back to some piece. And I'm judging you. That's how I say. I'm going to dance. I'm going to be conscientious. I'm going to raise. I'm going to find them. If I'm going to be a person, I'm going to be We go to the house. She excused the two guys outside. And then as she came out, she was naked. She said she faked some sexual intercourse. I also denied her doing it because Never have I done that before, so I didn't want to do it. And then she said, if I don't do it, no one is going to know my whereabouts anymore because I have got to her privacy. So it's either I die in the house or she form up and down with the boys and then they do something between. She went to the kitchen and then picked the kitchen and started to struggle with me. So during the struggle, I was wounded in my palms. So, out of the anger, I took their life and I stabbed him. That's why the control when they say, "What we do, who be you? What's the material thing? Who be a good man, bah? Who be a good six feet? Who be a good man? Who be a good man? What's the matter? I'm a pure free man. See what? Who be the be? So can you come on? But you, you think so many? I'm jealous. Juvenile delinquency is on the rise in Ghana and it's headful. The officer in charge of the Senior Correctional Centre believes the causes are complex. Most of the offences are due to lack of parental care, broken homes, peer pressure, maybe the quest to get quick money. And what is really happening on the social media of late, I think it's a factor to the increase in the crime rate. Because they watch all kinds of movies, they watch all kinds of adverts, and when they lack the parental care, definitely they will listen to what their friends say. Accompany me to this place. You don't know what is there, but before you realize, you'll be caught by the law and you find yourself in our custody. The boys here, the age range between 12 to 18 for a juvenile. Then we have young offenders who are also below the age of 21, who are first offenders. When you come to the Senior Correctional Center, after the normal admission process, we have a, fa a, a health facility to assess them in terms of their condition, to see how fit they are to be able to serve the uh, sentence that they've given them. Then from there, we have a counseling unit too. They try to counsel them one-on-one -on -one to know their needs, to be able to tailor our resources to that direction. During the season, they will be able to detect whether the person will go to the formal school or to be trained in the vocational skills. 
The first point of contact when juvenile offenders are brought to the center is a psychologist. She tells me, more often than not, the juveniles arrive very terrified and anxious. For a typical conversation I had with someone last week, the person said she was just hungry. He didn't have anything, so he stole. But I want to believe from you know the majority of conversations we've had with some of the boys, you realize that you know it's you know the broken homes, broken families, uh, families unable to cater for their children. Maybe parents are dead. You know they run away from home. It's mainly because I think uh, families and parents are unable to provide a proper guidance for these boys and I think they are allowed to you know, be on their own. So as they go around, they find friends who also are probably in or already in some of these devices and they introduce them and I think it continues from there. So it kind of starts somewhere and then you know, other uh, opportunities are given them and then it continues. There's no specific age when it comes to men that we can have some of them as young as 15 and some probably as old as say 17 or 18. When it comes to murder, all the cases that I have interacted with, it's difficult for them to tell you exactly what happened. They all come up, blame it on they got angry and they acted out of anger. So some sort of a way to displace their aggression and then it ended up in they killing you know, the person. You not get the results for everybody, but as much as possible, I, 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 I feel that it is, I know that it is reformative for a lot of people. Some don't have jobs to do or have any skill whatsoever. They just walk the streets, get something to do. So something as simple as getting him a trade or a skill, getting him occupied with something. He goes back home and he feels he's accomplished something especially those who are able to write, say, an examination in BEC or MVTI or something. They go back home and they feel that they've accomplished something and they are better positioned to you know, make something out of their lives. Established on 19th May 1947 as the Boston Institute of Juveniles, it was renamed in 2007 as the Senior Correctional Center by the Juvenile Justice Act 2003, Act 6, Five, three. The centre is mandated to detain juvenile offenders between the age 13 to 21 years, from a minimum of three months to a maximum of three years. The centre offers vocational training and a second chance at formal education to the offenders. I was having a personal phone and a personal laptop, so I used it to watch pornography whenever my parents are not around. The time came, I became addicted to it. I developed urge for it and I couldn't control myself. So I had one girlfriend who has been coming to me. So when she comes, I'll be with her and we'll be moving around. And unfortunately, I slept with her. And when I slept with her, the, um, her parents reported the case and they arrested me. When I came to the worst time, by the grace of God, they sent me to um, school, SHS. They realized that like, I was very fast in mathematics and some of the science questions that maybe we use logic reasoning to get it. Like I was very fast there. So when maybe we, uh, we sit for, let's say, um, intercontest, uh, inter like between uh, my niece and I, like I was able to drop them down. So they added me to the National Science and Math team in my school and um, we stood for the um, competition. At home, I was very, very comfortable. I couldn't lack anything. My parents gave me the maximum guidance, but I was so stubborn. One day, I wanted to be a medical doctor. At home, when I was at home, like, uh, <laughs> I couldn't control my sexual urges. But when I came here, by God's grace now, it's off. My stability of mind has improved. The value of the training offered to the inmates is evident in what they become when they leave the center. I've got something out of here. Very big thing. I just choose the work auto electrician. I work on vehicles, how to wire a car, how to program, control units, keys, everything. Now, this is what, that is what I'm doing. To become a successful man, 
and to become a hero, you have to pass through some things. It was the only opportunity for me to gain something out of it. That is, that is the whole thing. Because I can't waste like three, four years here. They should take every opportunity here serious. People are learning. We have a lot of trade here. Mason, ceramics, I mean, uh, fitting shop, portal electrician, general electrical, carpentry. I don't know whether these things are still here, but I'll plead to them to take any opportunity that they are taking here serious and learn out of it. They shouldn't waste their three, four years here. life, don't in Ghana, the administration of juvenile justice is governed by the Code of Criminal Procedure 1960, Act 30, and the Juvenile Justice Act 2003, Act 653. It states in Taalia that a juvenile has the right to privacy during arrest, the investigation of an offence, at the trial of the offence or at any other stage of the course or matter. Also, that in the absence of a birth certificate or a baptismal certificate, a certificate signed by a medical officer as to the age of a person below 18 years of age shall be evidence of the age before a court without proof of signature unless the court directs otherwise. In reality, these laws are not always applied. To the letter. Our law is the envy of several other uh, countries in the world, even including the United States of America, okay? Because the main thing is that when it comes to the sanctions, the punishment for a juvenile, and when we say a juvenile, that's a child under 18 who is in conflict with the law. The sanction regime is very beneficial, very short terms of uh, detention and they are designed in such a way as to give the juvenile a second opportunity to put their lives together. So what you find is that our law respects the principle that institutionalization, as you say, putting a juvenile in incarceration should be a measure of last resort. At least 70% is good. That is to say, we do apply it well. In about 14 years in the juvenile court, the determination of age is not usually a major issue. That is to say that the frequency of uh, occurrence of that issue is not that much. It's, it's quite low. Well, we, we, as a country, we have a, a very comprehensive juvenile justice system in terms of the procedure and what is expected of us to do in the process. So it's very consistent and it's very uh, beautiful in terms of the structure of the So you, you expect that uh, these things work mechanically. What for me, it, it is having a dent on, on this kind of a comprehensive structure has to do with how uh, the state is ruling out Right. The juvenile justice system. So, for right. instance, right at the entry point, a child who is below, who is above the age of 12 years, is, is, is criminally responsible for a act. And when that happens, the law provides that a child below the age of 18 years and above 12 years, when you commit offense, you cannot be put into adult prison. So, clearly, there's a, there's a clear, there's expert statement made by the law as to what the system should demand when a child commits offense. But here's the case, you see a number of children ending up in adult prison for offenses that have committed as children. Women who say, I'm not saying, say, many and feel sin. We see women feel do in senior. You have women 2001, first April, and women who are training. So, we need to be here in Momus Mebua, and to come up with some school and amico, and come to this, and we have an investigation in school. We have to be here for me, should ask God, and we have to be here for me, and we have into one and care and should ask God be a bit with your mom. One woman says, Say, Nancy, when you say, Nancy, near the MABPR. A recent report by Crime Check Foundation revealed even more worrying infractions of the administration of juvenile justice in Ghana. Ibrahim Opon Kwating is executive director of Crime Check Foundation 
and host of a TV show, Time with a Prisoner. I encounter, usually encounter juveniles in adult prisons. And I'm sure you are aware of the law. The law is clear. Juveniles are not supposed to be kept in adult prisons. They are supposed to be kept at the Senior Correctional Center. And the framers of the law, in their wisdom, uh, know why juveniles should not be kept in adult prisons because they should not be exposed to hardened criminals. Uh, again, again, if you look at the prison's architecture, it was built for the strong, you know, with no recourse to uh, juveniles who may not have the psychological capacity to be in such prisons. You know, our prisons are terrible. You know the congested nature of our prisons. We know that there is no proper classification of prisons. So mixing juveniles with the uh, adult prisoners, some of whom may have committed heinous offenses, what would we be teaching them? So I encounter some of them periodically. And uh, in the case of Adam Frimpong, he tells us that uh, he, when we met him, he told us that he was 15. But he claims the policeman inflated his age. It is not only have them come across many juveniles. Chief Superintendent Courage Atem speaks for the Ghana Prison Service. He tells me the service is aware of these infractions and has taken steps to rectify some of it. He is confident that the service is doing their very best to transform the juveniles in their custody. There have been instances where officers, from the look of things, detected and know this guy is a juvenile. Is, is below uh, 18 and uh, but probably the documentation that brought him shows that he's, he's 18 above and so when it happens like that we have to go back to the police uh, together with the, um, uh, the CID together with the Department of Social Welfare to rectify uh, issues if there are any anomalies and there have been instances where it was actually legally you know uh, um, determined that yes this is a minor and therefore shouldn't be in adult prison and therefore uh, they, they would have to go back to court for the right thing to be done. I wouldn't say very well equipped um, as compared to international standards but I would, I would say that we have some facilities or structures put in place to ensure that we are able to at least offer our reformative rehabilitative programs. That is how come we have classrooms and we have uh, workshops that the inmates are trained in. And so, yes, um, we are making do what we have. The family and society are major stakeholders in the reformative process of young offenders. Sadly, sometimes they become the bane of the reintegration process. Children are our future. So, in their own small way, whatever that they can do, they should come and help the centre. If anybody is touched, to donate even a school bus for us, we'll be very glad. The ICT center too is there, the infirmary is there. If you, even if you want to adapt a dormitory, we'll give you that chance to adapt. Then you take care of the boys that are in there, their needs, bed, mattresses, and other amenities that are being stretched. So this is my humble appeal. Is the mandate of the service or government to take care of their health? So ideally we are supposed to provide everything for them. But as it stands now, we rely heavily on donations and philanthropists to offer these services. So treat medications, we have a lot of medications, prescriptions are standing to be to be bought for the boys. So that's even goes even to even make our cases even get worse because the person has a condition and has in the treatment he or she needs. What is expected in the media when it comes to reporting matters of children is protecting the dignity and the privacy of children. These are the two things that are major wants to do. You are protecting the privacy and then the dignity of the child. Because whatever you put out on social media would have a replication on the child, even after 20 or, or 30 years. So it is your business to protect the dignity and the privacy of children. So there is a way and manner that you need to carry out your report so that the image of the child will be protected. There is no doubt that the administration of juvenile justice in Ghana goes beyond what happens in the courtroom. 
there must be a deliberate effort to balance the welfare of young offenders so that they can contribute socially and economically to nation building.